Skycraft started in the 70s as commercial work boats. <clears throat> we built really strong boats for the clammers, crabbers, fishermen, Coast Guard, Navy, Sea guys like that. We evolved from that into sport fishing boats, which we used the same technologies, the same heavy duty construction. And we went away from the plywood and went to all fiberglass. A lot of the sport fishing guys had the same needs as the commercial guys. They needed a heavy duty boat. They were fishing in the winter seasons and, you know, cod fishing and blackfish, things like that. So they wanted a really strong boat that could break a little ice, could hold up. So that's how that got involved. You know, then we transformed from the stable modified V boats into the DV boats for deeper ocean fishing and things like that. Well, when we started the company, we started designing the commercial fishing boats. <clears throat> and we designed things in the air to, to assist us, like to carry the rake handles and the tong handles and things like that. So now, as we started sport fishing, we had some of the same needs. We needed a stable platform, it needed to drift right, needed to do certain things right. And as time went on and as we fished, we tried to solve a lot of issues that we need. Like, first of all, we need a place to put the fish, so we need a fish well. We need a place to keep the fish alive, so we designed bait wells. We need a place to keep the sinkers, so we put sinker trays in. We designed uh, knife racks and plier racks and rag racks, and when we're fishing, whether it's shark fishing or fluke fishing, knives and pliers aren't flying all over the place. So we try and design everything so it has a place on the boat and it has a, a need. And, and so it's a very practical type of application. We designed these boats here in Long Island to, to fish basically New England waters originally, okay? Therefore, pilot houses, because it's cold bass fishing and cod fishing in the wintertime without a pilot house, okay? And as that happened, we started selling these boats down along the eastern, coast, the eastern seaboard from Maine to, let's say, Virginia, for the Chesapeake Bay and areas like that. Well, as time progressed, you know, and as a lot of people from New York moved to Florida, they found that they'd prefer to be in the shade of a pilot house versus being out in the sun all day in an open center console. Fishermen all over the place need a good riding boat that drifts right and is very stable and everything fishes well, and that's the purpose of it. Here's the thing, if you buy a boat from us, you can keep it for the rest of your life. The boat will last forever. You'll replace pumps and motors and electronics, but the boat will last forever. We never really tried to be the biggest boat company in the world. We just tried to be the best boat company in the world for what we do. When you go to a boat show, all these boats look terrific. They look great. The cosmetics is right on, okay? You can't tell how they ride at the boat show or how they drift. I would say that it's very important to know how the boat rides, how the boat drifts. Um, all of our dealers will give you a ride on the boat. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll demonstrate the boat. Everybody's welcome to come to the factory see they're built. What's important is what's under the floor that you don't see. We do everything by hand. There's no machinery. There's an old fashioned type of shop as far as, you know, our construction methods. It's much stronger when you do it by hand and spraying things. As far as modern goes, you know, we're using the latest materials, the latest technologies and the latest engineering to, to make sure we build the strongest boats possible. Any hull I build, you can use for recreational or commercial. Like if you order a commercial boat, like if Sito orders a boat, I don't change the laminate schedule. They're all the same thickness, they're all the same stringers, they're all contained. And we have a commercial lifetime warranty, which nobody has. The first phase of the operation is the fiberglass phase, where we manufacture here all the parts. The hull, the deck, the stringers, the floor, the steps. There's a lot of parts in a boat that people don't realize. They just see a boat. But there's the bottom, the top, the stringers, the floors, all these different little parts, consoles, companionway doors. We put in 25 mils of gel coat. There's different types of gel coat, and we use this image gel coat, which has better v VU and it, traits in it. it, it doesn't fade as fast, it, it's much better. Now, a gel coat like that is like $10 a pound, versus a regular orthotelic gel coat, which is like a dollar a pound. It's the best gel coat that you can get. Then, then we start out after we gel coat the mold, we start in with a ounce and a half mat, which is a multi-directional material, which gives you bond, all right? You need that to bond against the gel coat. Then the next layer would be a woven roving, which we use a biaxle woven to a mat, and we put in layer after layer of that. Now, that, the woven is a unidirectional material, which gives you the strength. Uh, my largest competitor, those are both similar to mine, but a pilot house, I would say, there's a couple of them. Uh, I think all of them that are besides me that build my type of boat uh, are using plywood stringers, which I think is ridiculous. Okay, I would never do that, because it's, it's a wetted area, it's gonna rot eventually okay uh, that's a big thing they use plywood floors for example their floor 
is three pieces of plywood and five gallons of resin. My floor is 55 gallons of resin and four rolls of material. My floor, you can shoot from 10 feet with a nine millimeter, you can't go through it. So, so those are the things that, that kind of set me apart. We don't use carpeting. We don't do things like that. I came out with a, a lifetime warranty in 1990. To this date, I've never had a hull failure. I've never paid $1 in warranty on a hull failure to a dealer, a customer, anybody. They're all holding up, they're all still floating, no problem, no issues. And it's not because I'm a genius. It's because fiberglass isn't biodegradable. So if you make the hull out of fiberglass and the string is out of fiberglass and the floor out of fiberglass, it can't break. The next crew, the next phase two is the sub-assembly where we fiberless in the stringers and the floors and all of that kind of stuff, okay? And then it's sub-assembly, the decks, they get gel coated and then, even though we do it all by hand still, there's always new products coming out that we're right on, on the cutting edge with. Because we use fiberless stringer systems and we, we inject them with foam, we fill the outside areas with foam so water can't travel from compartment to compartment. That's why we can have wells below the decks where you can't do that with plywood because water could seep into things. The next thing we need is floor support. We can't have openings so big that the floor is flexible when you're walking on it. It's got to be strong, right? Those are the important things of the stringer. And those are the things you never see. Because once I put the floor on, I cover it all up. But there's a gas tank under there. There's a fish well under there. There's a bilge in there to, to, to get access to, to put transducers and things like that. So once the stringers, once, once the stringers are in it and, I, and we install our floor, we put our floors down with poly bond or plexus and then we stainless steel screw it down and then we fiberglass it in. So even if you put a hole in the bottom of the boat, it's still watertight. That's the basis behind the fiberglass stringer system. The boats move from there to the next building, which is the finishing shop where the mechanics and the woodworkers put on the, uh, the decks, the rub rails, the windows, and they assemble the whole boat. Every hole I put in my boat, I countersink. Whether a cleat's going on it, a motor bracket, whatever. The reason for that is, even though the screw head ain't going in that countersink, when I silicone it, or 5200 it, it builds an O-ring. You put a hatch down, you don't do that, you see the silicone squish out the sides, and you think, oh, that's great. Well, now it all squished down, now it's gonna leak. So we, we try and prevent any of that. And after that, it goes into the mechanics where we mount the, um, the motors, the, the, the pumps, all the house side, the motor side, the batteries, the switches, and then the electronics, okay? And then, that, that, and then that's the completed stage. We use all Yamaha parts, we use all original equipment, we use all Yamaha motors. We manufacture all our own molds here. We make the plugs, we make the molds, we do the designs. We have a CNC machine in there. We make all our own drawers, our own rod holders, our own sinker trays. And so, so we can control our environment. So after 40 years of designing the boats and getting them to run right in the head sea and getting them to drift right in the wind, the hull design is pretty proven. We're sticking with that. We'll improve on other things, but the test of time is every boat's exactly the same. So one of the reasons why people choose our boats is because of their, their fishability, their stability, and, and their strength. So we've kind of designed our boats around that. It's a really good choice if you want a boat, you know, for a specific need of fishing. And, and that's what we're focusing on. We're not trying to make cruisers. We're not trying to make picnic boats. Our boats are really well-built, tough, strong boats for that application. That's our focus. For more information and to see the complete line of Steigercraft boats, visit steigercraft.com.